Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Whitney Ward. Welcome everyone. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Let's get right to it. it is the end of an era for Spokane coronavirus response at 5 p.m. today. The mass vaccination site at the Spokane Arena will close for good. Now, of course, that doesn't mean local immunization efforts are slowing down. In fact, not at all. Our Casey Decker is joining us now live from the arena with information on why this is all happening today. Casey. Well, Mark Whitney, I was actually here at the arena on the first day that it opened as a mass vaccination site and simply put, it really couldn't be a more different scene between then and now. You can see behind me almost no activity, also no snow on the ground anymore, but there's barely been anyone who's come in to get their shot here today. And that's part of the reason why local health officials are moving away from the mass site model and towards mobile clinics. Okay, perfect. The first day of the mass vaccination site at the Spokane Arena was chaos. All these guys are waiting. People waited hours just to get into the parking lot. Appointment websites were fluky. Instructions on exactly who was eligible, not always clear. We have had challenges throughout. Um, it was a novel virus, and we have been learning as we go throughout the entire, entire response effort, and our vaccine efforts were no different. But within a few days, the kinks had been worked out, and the site became a vital resource in the initial phases of the vaccination effort. That was the best way to really very quickly, right from the beginning, help our older population, help those with comorbidities get the vaccine, and to ensure equitable access. But since then, as more and more people are already immunized, demand for the shot has decreased. The parking lot that once overflowed into nearby streets now sits empty. And health officials are changing tact. Rather than using big stationary sites like the arena, they're working on reaching out to people directly. Expand the outreach into areas where they are experiencing barriers to vaccine access and it will help them distribute, you know, basically these life-saving vaccines um, more equitably and more conveniently. More than 75,000 people were vaccinated at the arena. That's about 19% of the doses administered in Spokane County, according to the health district. But as the arena begins to transform back to its former self, health officials say they're staying vigilant about getting the rest of the county vaccinated too. It does not mean that there is less of an importance to go out and get vaccinated or that there is less effort being placed on getting more people vaccinated. There's still a lot of work to be done. Now I'm showing a 501 here, so this is officially now closed. Thanks, of course, to all the staff and the volunteers who made this work for the last six months. Meanwhile, the Spokane Shock have a home game here on Saturday, and I'm told there's high confidence that the arena will be ready to go to welcome fans back into the stands for the first time in more than a year. Reporting live from the Spokane Arena tonight, Casey Decker, Crem2 News. Casey, thank you very much. Now to some breaking news at 5 o'clock. The southbound lanes of Highway 395 near Ritzville are shut down after a crash that tipped over a truck hauling hydraulic fluid Take a look right there. The Department of Transportation has rerouted traffic to State Route 21 and 26, but there's roughly four miles of backups, they say. Crews on the scene are working to mop up that spill, but significant delays are expected for quite some time. Well, it is Thursday, which means, of course, it's time for Tom Sherry's barbecue forecast. Yeah, tonight, Tom, grilling up Italian sausage sandwiches. And Tom, <laughs> what's the best time this weekend to grill? Oh, I'll tell you the best time. My barbecue forecast coming up in just about 15 minutes. We'll give you a first look at weather here, though. But letting you know that I'm doing New York-style Italian sausage sandwiches. Why? Because I love them, and I'm a dad, too. So I think it's perfect for uh, Father's Day weekend. I try not to repeat my recipes, but this is such a favorite year year in and year out that we do it uh, we do it for you. All right, let's head over here and do the weather for you, shall we? We'll head over here to the big green wall. You got it. 80 degrees, the current temperature. An absolutely beautiful day out here on the Creme 2 outdoor patio. I don't know about you, but it feels like a Friday to me. I know it's Thursday, but it just feels like a Friday, right? Well, we take a look at the uh, satellite and radar picture, and we've actually got a weak, dry, cool front that looks like it's going to push into the area over the weekend. We'll still see temperatures above average into the 80s, but it is going to get windy. We'll look for wind gusts on Saturday up to about 30 miles per hour. In the meantime, get ready for a very warm to borderline hot day on Friday, shooting for a daytime high of 88. That's after a morning low of 53 degrees. When we take a look at your weekend forecast, of course, Juneteenth now on Saturday, we'll look for partly cloudy skies, windy conditions, a high of 85. And then for dear old dad on Sunday, we'll look for a daytime high of 80. 
84 with more sunshine, less clouds, less wind, a bit on the breezy side. Again, I'll have the day that you need to get out in your backyard and do some grilling uh, coming up in just a few minutes. 85 degrees looks pretty much perfect to me yeah. for Saturday. Thank you, you Tom. By the way, if you want to cook the Italian sausage sandwich recipe along with Tom, just text the word or the letters BBQ to 509-448-2000. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom.